right, I'm going to show you how to get the OSD firmware and flight controller firmware. Just go into Google, type in Immersion RC, go to their main webpage, click on Products. Now you can either click on the Middle Danny, the Umagata, or the Regular Vortex. It doesn't really matter in the situation. Just click on that. And you want to go to see the latest Vortex stuff. Now on this page, all you do is click on Firmware Downloads. And this is where you download the files that you need. If you have the Metal Danny version, you get this one. The Umagata, this one. And if you have the regular Vortex, you get this one. 2.8 with Betaflight 2.5.3. That's the one I want. So I'm going to click on it. Let it download. Now unzip it. So just open it up and it'll be in your downloads. Take the files and move them over into documents. I already have them, so just replace the files in the destination. And then they'll be in the documents when you need them. And that's how you get the OSD and the, and the flight controller firmware. First, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the OSD. First things first, remove your props, plug in your USB cable, power it up, your computer should be. Now go to the Immersion RC Update Tools Configurator, hit Vortex 250 Pro. Now before you hit Read Settings from Vortex, go in here to Program. It should say Vortex Detected in Program Mode. Update Firmware. Click on the OSD you want. In this case, 2.8. It should beep. And there you go. It should start. Alright, the OSD upgrade is complete. Power off, unplug your LiPo, okay now I'm going to show you how to upgrade the flight controller firmware. First things first, remove your props, plug in your USB, plug in your LiPo, hear the beep, wait a few seconds. Okay now there's two ways of going about this. First pull up Betaflight, this is the easiest way, go over here to firmware flasher, Choose Immersion R3 RC Fusion F3 Flight Controller Board. Now go in here and find the one you want. In this case, we want 253. Hit Load Firmware. There you go. It's loaded. Now the other way to load the firmware onto Betaflight is go to Load Firmware Local. And wherever you downloaded it to. open it up and there you go just hit flash firmware sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't it's finicky but here we'll try and get it on the first try of course not all right it should start beeping though that means it's in bootloader mode try again try again there we go okay that time it didn't go sometimes it doesn't sometimes it does we'll try it again now to try again, all you need to do, unplug your LiPo, wait a few seconds, plug it back in, if it doesn't beep, that's fine, it's beeping, it's fine, flash firmware, flash firmware, flash firmware, Oh my god, flash firmware. I do not know why it does this. But it does. This may take a few times. It might go on the first try, it might take 20 to 30. It depends. Some people claim it's the USB cables, which it is. Some of them are only power cables, like these two are just power USB cables. They do not transmit data. You need one that transmits data. If it stops at any point in time, just keep trying. Be patient, it will go. Oh 
All right, looks like we got it. There you go. First thing to do, unplug your LiPo, unplug your USB. Now, what you're gonna do, is get your radio, turn on your radio, plug it in. Okay, these beeps mean it is in the wizard. There, it just found a receiver. So I'm gonna plug in my head plays. So you can see what's going on. This also may take a few tries. I don't know why it does this, but. It'll be looking for a receiver, detecting receiver. Okay, when it says no receiver detected, no problem. All you need to do, unplug your LiPo, turn off your radio, reboot it, turn your radio back on. This, I don't know why it takes a few tries to, but it does. Alright, we got it that time. Now you center all controls on your radio. So I'm sure you've done this. Center all your controls. Okay, move roll control left and hold. So I'm gonna roll left and hold that. Now I'm gonna move right and hold that. And just go through all these commands that it tells you to do. Alright, Imperial Marks means you got it. You don't have to listen to it if you don't want to. You can unplug it at any time. Okay, now that we got the flight controller and OSD updated, what you're going to do is go into beta flight, plug in your LiPo, plug in your USB, turn your radio on. Go in here to beta flight. Now you can confirm it's working by picking it up and moving it. You can see the gyros working. Okay. First thing I do is go into the receiver tab and make sure everything is working. So you can see I move the throttle. It works. Pitch forward, pitch and roll works. It all works. Now, I have mine set up to arm on a switch. Now, there's tons of YouTube videos showing you how to set that up on your radio. So, if you don't know how to do that, go check those out. So, I have mine set up to arm on this switch. Now, how to do that is go to your modes tab, and it says arm, click add range, and now to figure out what that is, once you set it up in your receiver, go to the receiver tabs and click it. Mine's auxiliary 2. So go back to your modes tab. Arm. We're going to set that to auxiliary 2. Now, click save. And now, my motor should spin whenever I arm this. You can confirm that here. If you have yours set up to arm on a stick, it's the same same thing, just down and left to arm instead of using it as a switch, and your motor should come on. Now, you were concerned about your values going all over the place. That's a normal behavior in air mode or in self-leveling mode. That's the motors trying to level themselves out, even if it's on the bench like this. 
That's what the I term does. So mine's all set up, it's ready to go. So if I arm, you see here, once you go above 10 to 15% idle, the I term will start to go. Now that's just, that's no throttle nothing. That's just staying at 15% and letting it sit there. It's just gonna keep building up. That's normal. Even in acro mode. Acro mode's not as bad. I don't know why. But that that's normal. That's all normal.